One last story about Hugh Cole. He was a really, really good pitcher. In fact, he went off and played ball for yeah. a while. Yeah. But, uh, and I forgot what year it was, but he was pitching that year. And Lowell James decided, if I'm going to play, I'm going to have to be a catcher. So he went out for catcher. And I've forgotten who we played at that time. But Hugh struck out 13. You know how many got on base? 13. <laughs> <laughs> Lowell didn't catch a one of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, it wasn't because he didn't try, but Hugh could throw the ball, I'm telling you. Oh, you could see it was Lowell running to the, run the ball down. <laughs> oh, his, the third strike, he dropped the third strike. Yeah. Okay, he, okay. he dropped all the strikes, not this strike. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it got to where if if he had two strikes on him, you could almost think, well, Lowell's going to start running. <laughs> 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 oh, no. But, uh, you know, uh, I lived down not too far from Lowell, and we used to get up go up there and we had baseball gloves and a ball because Pete and Hoyt James, his older brothers, played uh, for the town team. If, if they had town teams all out in Baldwin County and they'd play on Sundays afternoons. And uh, they played for Bon Secure, I believe, didn't they? Yeah, they, they did. They did. And uh, we'd go up there and we'd back off about as far from here to the door. And that's one reason I, I would love to play third base because we'd back off and throw a low ball just on purpose, and we'd practice scooping them up, you know. But I'd never forget, we'd, we'd get up there for hours at a time and just back off and throw balls low or like that so we'd get used to shifting and how to catch it. But it paid off later years, but it, I didn't think it was much fun, but we enjoyed it. We didn't have anything else to do. Uh, what about Coach Jay? How about uh, Coach Lunsford? You mentioned uh, him. Y all, y all he just came. Yeah, he was just, he wasn't really a coach, really, but uh, he, he just came by and helped, I think. Yeah, he, he worked somewhere else. Yeah, he, I mean, he chewed tobacco. Yeah, he always yeah. had a, yeah. he was I'll a never guy. forget, y'all you, you, you remember Robert Pruitt? Yep. Yes. Yeah. He was a short guard and he was chubby. Mm -hmm. And I was playing, I was playing DB in practice and somebody said something to me or something, and I turned, and Robert Pruitt came out there and just knocked the stuffings out of me. And Al started laughing. He said, what happened, Flowers? You didn't see him coming? <laughs> I said, no, I didn't. Uh, How about, um, I think your junior year, y'all played Biger at Ladd Stadium. Y'all remember playing in Ladd Stadium or what that was like? To oh, yeah. Hear? I was scared to death because, you know, you. If, you know, you wanted to play and get out of there. That's what I remember. I mean, uh, and you see some of those guys standing on the sidelines in the stands. Don't want to tackle them. I mean, they look bad. I, I don't know how bad they were, but. I remember people talking about when they got drive there, you know. People would knock on their cars when they would drive, drive out, shake them. Yeah. <laughs> that happened when I was playing. Yeah. You tell us to wear helmets coming out. Wear of your helmet. Oh, right. Coach Meredith came in 45. Before him was a guy named Ray Davis. I don't remember. Y'all have any recollection of him? I, I, guess I just heard that. some of the older players, you know, mention him, but I didn't know well, him. One of the write-ups said he had been an assistant coach at the University of Alabama in 1940. Which I, I thought, how did how did he get to, to <laughs> old Alabama? <laughs> I, I talked with Sandy Kirkland uh, a couple years ago, and he he just said he was you know really an outstanding coach. But right. That's right. I wonder how he he got to, to Foley. Well, what what y'all's earliest memories of, of seeing a Foley game? Because I was, must have been in about the sixth or seventh grade. We used to play. Well, we played all the day games, and I remember, uh, gosh, Bob Sosby and his brother. Who else played? Joe Calloway, I remember him. Yeah, I remember Joe, 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 yeah. Joe was a good player. And, uh, and then David came back yeah. out of service and yeah. played. And he yeah. was a good Ooh, David, yeah. David, David Calloway. David was a bruiser. I mean, yeah. he, he would. He didn't try to run around him. He just run right. over him. Right. I mean, he punished people when they came up to tackle him. I mean, he his ambition was, I'm gonna run over you, and he did most time. 
Oh, and he was a hard runner. He was fast too, you know. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he was but, big and fast. Another one I liked too is watch was Bill Passmore. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Bill, he, yeah. He was a good back. Yeah. Uh, he come back out of the service yeah, too and played. Yeah, yeah. But I guess the one I really admired the most was Pete Blackwell. Yeah. Uh, Pete, you, t you know, if you ever watched Tennessee way back in the 40s and 50s, they ran a single wing, and General Nalen, that was his bread and butter. And he always needed a tailback. And when we ran it here at Foley, well, Pete filled the bill to a T. He could run, he could pass, he could kick, punt. I mean, he, he was just like a triple threat, you know. I mean, right. you heard that expression. Right. But he was, he, he filled that to a T. I mean, he was just a good, really a good player. They say Cecil, his older brother, was even better. He was yeah. one of the best football player to come out of. Yeah, y'all were in first grade when Cecil played. You probably don't remember him, do you? I don't remember. This, I don't I remember, remember him playing. I remember him, but I don't remember him playing. I no. remember the story goes, and I think Pete told me or someone told me, might have been one of the James brothers. But when uh, Cecil was a senior, must have been around 41, 42, they went to St. Stanislaus and played them. Well, guess who played over at St. Stanislaus? Was it Blanchard? Doc Blanchard. And they said that Cecil outgained him all night long. Well, he went to the uh, Army Academy, and he made he was Mr. Inside. Doc, uh, what was the uh, Glenn, Glenn Davis? Davis. Glenn, Glenn Davis, Davis was Mr. Outside. One won the Heisman one year. One and the other one won it the next year. But they said that Cecil just played all over uh, Doc that night. I thought, man. Oh, a couple of them. I I interviewed uh, uh, Teeny Howell a couple years ago and uh, also Mickey Blackwell. The thing that all of them remember is, I think, uh, an opening kickoff that got called back or something. Uh -huh. And Cecil ran it back and got called back and they were mad about that. He, he was fast, too. He was. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. He played baseball. Yeah, I saw him play baseball. Yeah. He was a good baseball He was a bunch of kids. Yeah, he played baseball. Yeah. 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 Your grandfather played at Somerdale back then. Is that right? Thing? I was talking to uh, Carrie the other night, and I told him, I said, I got to go see uh, uh, Keith. He said, what are you going to see Keith for? <laughs> and I told him, he said, oh, gosh, here comes the old times. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, my first job as a teacher was at Robertsdale. And when I got there, Britton Kelly had been called into the service, and he was coaching up there. So they said, Absolutely, if you go get a teaching job, you've got to coach. So I coached the B team football, the junior high basketball, and the baseball team. You know how much they paid me? $18 a month for 10 months. That was $180 I made <laughs> for coaching. And you know how you are when you're coaching, you're out there any number of hours. But the big thing I remember about that, I didn't know anything about coaching him, but uh, we came down to play Foley, and they, the varsity team, they let me come with them. And uh, your dad was playing that year. They had Foster and Chisholm Hall and, and Lauder. They beat us to a pulp, I'm telling you. They had a good football team back then. Your dad's team was a good, good football yes, player. I, I remember the 61 team. To me, I think that was the best team that Foley ever had. That was the year I'm talking about. That was I year. mean, I think if I'm not mistaken, you correct me if I'm wrong, Keith, but I think they went the whole year and they had seven points scored against them or something like that. Was Six. it? Six. I know they were good. And it, they were good. Correct me if I'm wrong, they were ahead like 40 something to nothing. So they cleaned the, cleared the bench and they threw one long pass against a third teamer, I guess, or whatever, and they completed for a touchdown. Now you're talking about some sick players. They thought they, and I thought they'd go that, a whole year and not even score, and they were that good. Because I don't know how many went from that team to 
scholarships. It Crosby's, was, they had Crosby. One to two of them. One went something. to Tulane. Yeah. One went to Troy, I believe. Did. Yeah. And Foster wound up going to Georgia Tech. Georgia, Marlowe went right. to Georgia Tech. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, sure yeah. Chisholm Hall went to Tulane. Yes. Yeah. And yes. what was it? Bubba married? Was he Bubba, on that team? No, he <laughs> was 55 and 56. Oh, I, okay, I got the wrong. Okay. Well, you're talking interesting that the team that scored on that team was Alba. Coach Meredith was the coach at Alba. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's kind of ironic. He was the only one to score on, on Fola. <laughs> I remember when uh, I came back out of the Navy and I and I got married later in a year or two, we came to the Foley games that year and they were playing out and Coach Meredith was a team. And they came out and they started the offense and I said, I can't believe this. And I said, what are you talking about? I said, he's running a uh, T formation. <laughs>